Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Ghostly Tales for Ghastly Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called The Broken Down Coffee. There are good ghosts and bad ghosts, just as there are good children and bad children. The difference is that bad ghosts are always bad, but bad children can sometimes get better. Augustus Filch was a bad child. He had run away from home. He didn't like his parents because they were always telling him what to do. He didn't like his teachers either because they would shout at him when he talked in class. And he didn't like his friends because they didn't like him. In fact, they weren't really friends at all. So he packed a carrier bag full of toys, put a chocolate biscuit in his pocket and stole enough money from his mother's purse to take a bus ride into the countryside. It was raining as he got down from the bus. The doors hissed shut behind him and the back of the bus disappeared into the middle of a swirling cloud of thick grey mist. Augustus pulled his school blazer tightly around his neck. It was freezing cold and he had no idea where he was. In the distance he could see a light. Somebody had obviously watched him get down off the bus and had switched on a light to guide him through the fog. As he set off towards the light, Augustus shouted out, This is the life! to cheer himself up. But he didn't mean it. He walked fast for fear of what might be lurking in the bushes on either side of him, and it wasn't long before he saw the faint outline of a small, broken-down cottage. Smoke rose from the chimney and curled upwards in a twisting spiral before spreading out and disappearing into the mist. Somebody was at home. Ow! Augustus yelped. He had stubbed his toe on an old piece of wood that was lying on the track. He picked it up and read the words which were engraved on the wood. It was the name of the cottage. Done in. Augustus knocked twice on the front door and waited, hopping nervously from foot to foot. Nobody came. He knocked again. Somebody had put the light on, so there had to be somebody in. That was the usual way of things. Well, maybe this cottage is not usual, thought Augustus suddenly. He had to admit that it was most odd that nobody had appeared to find out what all the knocking was about. The front door was not locked. Augustus put his shoulder against it and shoved. At first it would not move, but gradually the rusty hinges gave way and the wooden door creaked open. Inside the floor was covered in a deep carpet of dust. Cobwebs hung from the ceiling and a bat, disturbed by the noise, flew over Augustus's head and out of the cottage. Nice, thought Augustus. This is just what I was looking for. But again, he didn't mean it. A roaring fire flew flickering shadows onto the ceiling. They bowed towards Augustus and beckoned him forward. As he moved into the room, he heard a noise in the corner. It was a rocking chair, rocking very slowly, just as it would have done if Augustus's grandfather had been sitting in it, smoking his pipe. Grandpa, said Augustus nervously, Grandpa? Augustus, said a voice behind him. Oh, Grandpa, it is you, shouted Augustus, and he spun round to where the voice had come from. There was nobody there. I'm over here, said the voice again, and a bony hand tapped Augustus on the shoulder. He went as white as a sheet. There was someone breathing on the back of his neck. Aren't you going to turn round, Augustus? Augustus shook his head. I won't bite, said the voice softly in his ear. Augustus screwed up his eyes and slowly turned round. See, said the scruffy little boy who was standing in the room with Augustus. 
I'm your friend. The boy's name was Arthur. He had run away from home too many years before. I like it here, said Arthur. I can do what I like and nobody tells me off. There's only one problem. What's that, said Augustus, who was eating the chocolate biscuit and wishing he had stolen six. He was that hungry. Well, I think this cottage is haunted. A biscuit crumb quivered on Augustus's bottom lip. You mean g g ghosts? he stammered. Augustus looked nervously at the winding staircase that led upstairs to the bedrooms. Not just ghosts, replied Arthur. Bad ghosts. Augustus choked. He had eaten the biscuit wrapper by mistake. They come in the dead of night with chains and axes and wail by your bedside. They scratch and scrape at the cellar door and beg you to release them. And if you go to sleep, they enter your dreams and fill your head with wicked thoughts. I think I'll go home now, said Augustus. What, and leave me here all by myself, said Arthur. You can't. Stay for tonight and we'll have some fun. Augustus was easily persuaded. Arthur assured him that the ghosts would not trouble them if they stuck together, and it had been so long since Arthur had played with someone of his own age that Augustus felt sorry for him. Besides, Arthur had promised Augustus that they would get up to no end of mischief, and any boy who is wicked enough to run away from his parents cannot refuse an offer like that. Augustus stayed. The two boys sat in the rocking chair and thought up terrible things to do. Augustus had a hundred ideas. They could go back to the road where the bus had stopped and shout names at passing cyclists. They could catch flies and drown them in the sink. They could find a dirty puddle and fill their boots with mud. They could refuse to eat their food. But as Arthur pointed out, they only had one chocolate biscuit between them, and Augustus had already eaten that. We, we could have a pillow fight, shouted Augustus, who was getting carried away with excitement. A oh, ball ring, yawned Arthur. When I said have some fun, I meant some real fun. Let's dial 999 and tell the police that there's a burglar in the house. Oh, yeah, way to go, shouted Augustus. I'll make it look like there's been a robbery and you make the phone call. They had just finished tying themselves up when three snarling police dogs leapt through the window and knocked onto the ground. A large pair of black boots scuffed up the dust under Augustus's nose and made him sneeze. Good evening, sir, said a gruff voice. Are you a burglar? No, replied Arthur, trying not to laugh. It was difficult with three Alsatians licking his face. Then would you mind telling me who is? Well, I'm not entirely sure, officer. You see, um, my friend made the phone call. The policeman yanked Augustus up by the seat of his trousers. Augustus's sides were splitting, but he dared not let the policeman see. And do you know who the burglar is, sir? Well, me, I suppose, howled Augustus, for whom all of this was too much. Both he and Arthur collapsed on the floor in helpless giggles. The policeman took a deep breath, then pressed his bristly face up close to Augustus. Do this again, son, and I'll lock you up for five years, he said. Then with a loud command of, Down, Fang, down, he stormed out of the cottage. It took the two boys half an hour to calm down. The policeman's face had been the funniest thing they had ever seen. Oh, let's do it again, shouted Augustus. Arthur had already picked up the receiver. Uh, ambulance, please, he said. Yeah, as soon as possible. My friend's in a terrible state of shock. Augustus grabbed the receiver and put on his illest voice. Help, he moaned. Quick, quick shouted Arthur. I think he's seen a ghost. He slammed the receiver down and burst out laughing. Augustus pulled his shirt tail out and ran around the room making loud woo, 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 noises. They heard the ambulance screech to a halt outside. They heard shouting and doors banging. 
Augustus pulled his hair up straight and fell to the floor in a pretend dead faint. The two ambulance men beetled in, carrying a stretcher. Who's seen a ghost? Well, he has, shouted Arthur. It was huge and had enormous teeth and a beating stick and green toes. Augustus's belly wobbled. If he didn't laugh soon, he would die. The ambulance man knelt down and cradled Augustus's head in his hands. Are you all right, son? No, whimpered Augustus. I think I'm dying. Oh, quick, shouted the ambulance man. The big needle, now! Miraculously, Augustus was cured. No, I'm awake, he shouted. I'm all right, I don't need the big needle. The ambulance man stood up and walked to the door without saying a word. Just before he left, he turned round. Remember, boys, he said, next time when you really are in trouble, we won't turn up. You'll have to get better all by yourselves. Arthur was straight back to the phone the moment the ambulance man had left. Ten minutes later, the air was filled with the sound of clanging bells as three fire engines screeched to a halt outside the cottage. There was a thump on the door, and five huge firemen burst into the room. "'Where's the fire?' shouted their chief. Augustus was piling wood onto the open fireplace. "'Here,' he said. "'Come on, laddie, where's the fire?' shouted the fire chief again. "'Here,' said Augustus. "'Do you want to warm your tootsies by it?' Arthur sniggered. Augustus snorted and pretended it was a cough. The chief's face turned red. The veins stood out on his forehead. No fire! Not really, cheeked Augustus. The fire chief lifted him up by his ears. You think that ringing the fire brigade and shouting fire is funny? But I don't. If you ever waste our time again, I'll give you such a walloping that I will start a fire on your bottom. Then he dropped Augustus onto the floor, turned round and led his men out of the cottage. Augustus and Arthur wept with the sheer brilliance of what they'd done. In fact, they cried themselves to sleep with laughter in front of the roaring log fire. When they woke in the morning, they were both cold. Let's phone someone else, said Augustus. Well, can't think of anyone, replied Arthur, who had gone off the idea. Well, how about our parents? They could come and get us. Uh, my parents wouldn't come out here to rescue me, said Arthur sadly. Well, mine would, if we told them that this cottage was haunted by a twelve-headed dog with fangs the size of daggers and that we were really, really scared, shouted Augustus, rushing to the phone. Half an hour later, Augustus's parents got down off the bus and ran towards the black smoke coming from beyond the trees. As they got closer to the cottage, they smelled the fire. When the cottage came into view, they saw for themselves the charred skeleton, the smouldering remains of the broken down cottage. The fire chief was standing by the front door. What's happened? said Augustus's father. Two young tearaways mucking about, said the chief. Must have fallen asleep in front of the fire. Probably a log rolling off onto the carpet. But they just phoned us up, told us to come and get them. There's a twelve-headed hound from hell in there. That sounds like them all right, said the policeman who was standing next to the fire chief. Augustus! Augustus's mother was running. Augustus! She shouted out her little boy's name for a second time. She had reached the door before anyone could stop her. She was expecting to find two burnt bodies, but as she slipped inside, her look of terror turned to one of joy. She was wrong. Augustus and Arthur were standing by the fireplace. Hi, ma'am, said Augustus. Am I glad to see you? We were absolutely terrified last night. There were hundreds of ghosts. Where? said his mother. Here, said Augustus. Here? said Augustus's mother. Well, what did they look like? Well, a bit like us, said Augustus and Arthur together. 
Then they both walked out of the cottage through the solid stone walls.